Welcome everybody. Hi and welcome everybody. Uh, so good to see you all here again today. So my name is Birgit Koopsen. If you don't know me, I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and I'm located in the Netherlands. And today we're going to print with botanicals and I'm going to show you a couple of fun um, uh, techniques using botanicals in your prints. And before I start, I'm going to show you some of the botanicals and some things uh, you can do with them. For instance, um, here I have some leaves and as you can see, they are brown. So they are not fresh leaves. They are prepared. I, um, I've put them in um, uh, glycerin. I hope that's the uh, right way to pronounce it. So um, there is a certain mix of glycerin and water that you can uh, create and you can put fresh leaves in there and then they uh, will be preserved and they stay like uh, flexible and they don't crumble and you can keep them for like forever. So these are at least half a year old, something like that. And then you can use them over and over again because in printing, you don't want your leaves to uh, crumble. So you cannot um, dry your leaves and then use them um, for printing because as soon as you start rubbing on top of them, they will all break down and they will stick to your plate and you cannot remove them. So that's um, something you can't do. So you either need um, fresh leaves or you can preserve them like this. If you just Google glycerin and leaves, then you will find uh, tutorials on how to do this. And then you can just create a bunch of them and then you have them always have them ready to print, uh, whether you can find them outside or not. Um, then I also, I went to the flower shop this afternoon and got some, um, yeah, some some botanicals that are nice to print with that have like uh, nice uh, details that you might uh, that might end up in your prints. Uh, I have a variety, uh, something with flowers here, but also these. Um, I, I'm not sure how they are called in English, but I think they are called asparagus, something like that. Uh, they are have really fine details and make beautiful prints. Something that I really like to print with is a uh, fern, but I couldn't get any fern today. Uh, so I don't have fern, but I really can recommend trying fern. I also went into my backyard and just cut some um, some plants in my uh, plant parts from my backyard that I uh, can use to print with. And um, so let's just do that. Just see um, what we're going to use tonight or today, I should say. I mean, where I am, it's night, but you're in your area. It's probably a beginning of the afternoon. Um, we will probably not use all of them, but I will pick a couple to work with. So today I'm going to work on my five by seven inch um, jelly plate. Um, but you can obviously all do all of these techniques on any size or uh, shape uh, gel plate. So I have one here and I have written on my on my case, no alcohol ink. I also have one that says alcohol ink, this one. And I also have it ready because I'm uh, going to start with printing with acrylic paint, which I will do on this one, but I will also print with archival ink and the archival ink might stain your plate. So I have a specific plate that I use for uh, archival inks and alcohol inks. So I hope I remember to change the plate when I'm ready to go from uh, acrylic paint to um to the archival ink because it would not be the first time that I <laughs> use my archival ink on a good plate, but we'll see. So um, what else do I have um, prepared? So I'm going to print on um, 
white cardstock paper, which is from the recollections uh, line from Michaels. And I have two um, sizes. So I'm going to print on this one, which is a little bit smaller than my plate is and will fill the entire uh, sheet of paper. And then I'm having this one that is a little bit bigger than my sheet and I can line it up and then um, um, print several layers on top of each other having a nice white border. So I'm going to use both of them. I also have some tissue paper here. I like to use tissue paper as the pickup paper because you can push it really nice in the open areas between the botanicals and the leaves and pick up all of the paint that's uh, that's in between. I also have just random copier paper to roll off my uh, brayer, to clean off my brayer and also to use as um, um, cleanup paper for uh, some of the techniques on the plate. And I also have some uh, cleanup paper that already has a good amount of acrylic paint on it. And I will explain later during this hour why I have this specific paper also ready to use. Um, so let's just start by uh, printing a couple of layers on a sheet of paper and, um, and just build up some layers using the botanicals in the uh, most simple way there is. And I'm going to use um, acrylic paint for my first uh, couple of prints. And I'm using um, mostly uh, Amsterdam acrylics and Liquitex uh, basics for, uh, for my prints. So that's the two brands of paint that I'm using today. I also have a couple of um, Winsor & Newton paints here. I might use them too. It doesn't really matter which acrylic paint you use. Uh, it, for me, it only um, the most important thing is the color and not uh, which brand I'm using. So I'm just going to use a couple of different colors and I'm going to start by rolling out a thin layer of paint and let's just start with one basic layer one solid layer of one color of course you can mix and match colors and use several colors on uh, in one print on one plate if you want to but i'm now just going to build up a couple of layers of um, solid colors so you get an idea um, of the possibilities. Let's just start really simple. And I'm going to push down. Let me get another sheet of paper because I want to keep my hands clean. And as the paper is smaller than my plate, I like to use this extra sheet of paper so I can Firmly rub and make sure that I really push down the paper uh, around the botanicals that are on my plate to make sure that I get uh, an outline that is as detailed as possible. So I'm going to pick it up. And this is my first layer. So this is a very, very simple um, a way of printing with botanicals and just getting the outline. But then, of course, you can also use the paint that's underneath um, the botanicals and also pick up that layer. And now I'm just printing. I just start on a white sheet of paper. But uh, of course, you could also start on um, a sheet of paper that has a basic um, color already on uh, on the background and then print on that and everything that's white in this print for instance would have some color already so this is the um, leftover paint from underneath the uh, plant parts and as you can see you get some really detailed um, leaves there and now I'm just going to add 
more layers to the same prints and just um, build up. I'm just going to take another color. I'm just going to build up a couple of layers um, on one print, I'm going to build up layers of uh, outlines. And on the other print, I'm just going to build up layers of the leftover paint and just see um, how that turns out. Birgit, we had a question. Do you like to work light to dark or the other way? Uh, I personally like to work light to dark because uh, two reasons. The first reason is that uh, if your colors are a little bit um, translucent, um, you your lighter colors will um, uh, change if you do them if you print them on top of um, of other colors. So, for instance, if I would have purple already on my plate. And um, I would add uh, yellow on top, for instance, then uh, my yellow would not be bright yellow. So I'd rather have the yellow first and then uh, print the, the purple on top because then um, in, the, in the areas where you don't cover up the yellow, it will be the bright original yellow because it's printed on the white paper. And the other reason is that uh, in gel printing, your layers are so thin that almost all of your colors are um, translucent. And then uh, for the same reason, um, if you use lighter colors on top of darker colors, they will not show as much as uh, if you do it the other way around. Unless you are know for sure that your colors are really opaque and um, and they look nice on top of another color, then of course you can totally try. And you can also totally do uh, both and uh, work just on top of each other and just see what comes out. But I, for some reason, I always go for uh, to start with uh, the lighter colors. So this is my second layer. I'm not really uh, overly excited about this layer. I'm going to try and remove some more um, of that paint in the open areas. I think too much stayed behind, which made uh, the print not so nice. And now it looks as if it already dried. So let's just remove this and see if I can pick this up with um, my print, the print that I um, also picked up my first layer with of the leftover paint. So it's not picking up anything. So apparently it's really, um, it dried really fast. So what I can do now is I do have this on my plate and it looks like this is actually quite a nice um, uh, bunch of set. Oh, uh, no, how do I call that? It's a nice um, bit of leftover and I don't want to waste it. So I can do uh, what I can do now is add another color on top and just pick up whatever is left on my plate. So, and I could can even then add uh, another uh, texture in there using botanicals. So for instance, in this area where it's a little bit empty, I could uh, add another leaf or um, plant part. I, I really don't know how to call something like this in English. I just don't know how would you call this. It's like, um, it's not a branch, is it? I don't know. Anyway, I'm just going to use this paint, this new paint, to pick up uh, what's and what has dried underneath and I'm going to use one of these larger sheets and hopefully 
pick up the dry paint that's underneath. And then I'm also just going to do another layer on top of this one. You never know. Um, I always say you can, if it's not what you want, then you can add more layers and just keep a layering until you get what you want. So let's just also continue on that one. Okay, so this looks much better already. As you can see, I picked up here the leftover uh, dry paint from the plate. I think this is actually quite pretty. Then I also have this little bit of leftover. Let's see if I can pick that up too in that open area and that worked. So now I got some detail also in that open area that was like really white in the first print, but now actually has some detail and texture in there. That's not that's not too bad. So let's um, add another layer to this one. Um, and how about a... <laughs> I'm going to do something that's really unusual for me and I'm going to use red. Not one of my, oops. Okay. Uh, not one of my favorite colors, so let's just see how that turns out. And I'm going to use one of these. And hopefully I will be able to... Um, get into those open areas really well with my with my paper. I'll just have to make sure that I rub really well. So um, I would never do this uh, with my brayer. So, in so for some techniques, I might actually use my brayer and just roll it like this to make sure that I get even pressure everywhere. But here uh, with this technique with um, botanicals, I really want to feel where uh, the parts are so I can make sure that I actually get all around these uh, parts and pick up as much as uh, possible from the open areas. So here we go. Oh, and that looks much better already. Very different print with that uh, extra layer on top. And I actually also kind of like the color color combination with the red. So now I have a really nice um, leftover print here on my um, on my plate. And of course, I want to use that too. Now I need to know for sure that this is dry before I can add an extra pickup layer because I know for sure that this is not wet, wet enough anymore to um, pull it like right away. Um, the layer of paint is so thin and uh, I did this other print already before I um, removed the, um, the botanicals from the plate. So um, most of this paint uh, kind of dries like instantly because of the thin layer. But uh, so I can't do, make a direct print, but to add another layer of paint to pick it up, it needs to be completely dry because if I would just add another layer of paint and roll it out while this is still wet, I would just mix it with the new paint and I would totally lose all of the details. So therefore I have to be a little bit careful not to do it too soon. Okay, so um, let's decide on the pickup color. And uh, so I actually really like the the teal with the red in this print. So I might use salt teal and maybe um, 
just uh, like a white or a lighter, a light pink maybe. Um, yeah, I'm no, I'm not sure. Let me see. I think I can't find my white paint. So how about I do silver? Let's do silver and the teal. So I think this is dry enough. Oh, yeah, that wasn't working. And some teal. And let's do some silver. That might be a little bit too much paint, but then I can just roll it off. So if you have too much paint on your plate, don't leave it on because um, if you have too much paint, you will not be able to pick up the dry paint from your plate. You have to make sure that your layer is really thin. So uh, thin enough to see the, um, the dry paint through your layer. Uh, but it needs to be still wet because if it's dried already, then uh, you can also not pick up that first layer. You cannot pick up dried paint. You always need a wet layer of paint uh, to pick up any dried paint from your plate. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that's really nice. And it got this really fun, nice shine now because of the silver that I mixed in with the teal. Okay, so that's a really simple way of, uh, of using um, botanicals to do uh, printing. But you can also print uh, in a way that you use the outline print and the leftover um, paint in one print and get a really nice and detailed print. And that's what I'm going to do now. So um, first, I'm going to create a background with a solid color solid bright color i'm going to use two or three colors for my background so let's do um let's do really bright and use neon colors Just going to roll them out and blend them where they touch each other. Now I'm going to clean up my brayer before I roll out the neon green because otherwise it would mix with the wet paint on my brayer and I would lose the color. Okay. Birgit, sorry to interrupt, but just a quick no. question. Yeah. Had a go customer ahead. ask, are more than one jelly plate needed if using more than one type of paint? And I had written back that only one plate is needed, but she had mentioned that you had mentioned not using the same plate if you're using various paints or inks on different days. So I'm just curious well, for your opinion. Yeah. So you can. Uh, one plate is enough if you don't care uh, about your plate uh, getting stained um, because uh, I will show you what the plate will look like when you use alcohol inks and uh, like archival inks, dye inks on your plate. It will turn yellow like this one. Um, but this does not affect um, your future prints. It does not harm the plate. It does not uh, come off when you uh, you do um, 
a future print so you can totally do all of your techniques on one plate but um the downside of having a plate that is yellow like this is that it kind of changes the color uh, the look of the color on your plate so when you print on a plate like this um, the you don't see the actual colors on the plate uh, they will be the actual colors in your print but it can make it a little bit harder to do um, color matching and stuff like that so I prefer to have a plate dedicated to alcohol inks um, because I rather print on a cleaner plate on a on a clear plate when I print with other products so that's just because that's my personal preference and not because you need to have an extra plate I hope that um I hope that makes sense that was perfect thank you so much okay you're welcome so here I have a very bright colored background and now I'm going to print I'm I want to print leaves on top of this background and I'm going to use darker colors um, for my second layer so I want to do like really dark mm, maybe even black I think I will just mix some black with some purple as I if I can open yeah so I have some purple and I'm just going to roll out this color and again, if you have too much color, just make sure to roll it off because you will not get nice detailed prints if you have too much paint uh, on your plate. Um, not only uh, in the pickup layer, but also uh, you will not get as much details from your leaves and your botanicals if you have too much paint um, on the plate because... Um, to get the result you want, your leaves need to actually pick up paint from the plate in certain areas. And if there's too much paint, they just can't pick up enough and you will not see any of the details. So in basically in every um, printing technique with acrylic paint, I can only say use as a little paint as possible like it's to it should still be workable right so um it should still be wet enough to um to pr to actually print um but uh if your paint is drying like really fast it might be an option to uh use a retarder a slow dry medium to make sure that your paint doesn't dry uh, too fast but then uh, still you will be able to get these like really thin layers so again I'm going to make sure that I go into these open areas between the leaves and pick up all of the paint so I get really sharp um really crisp outlines of the leaves then I'm going to pick up the paper so here are the outlines of my leaves now I'm going to remove the leaves and hopefully the paint is still wet enough because for some reason today my paint is drying like crazy it's probably because it's still really, really cold here and I have my heater, my heater on and the air is really dry. So if it's not picking up, I can always go back and use a layer of um, matte medium, but it actually is picking up. So 
Now you can see that I have some leaves in really bright colors and I also have the details of all the veins and everything, um, everything in there because I used both the outline and the leftover paint from underneath the leaves. I hope it uh, it is sharp enough for you to see the all the details. So then I have another thing that I like to do with these leaves, and that is um, printing with um, um, how do you call that um, metallics? Not this one, uh, like uh, yeah, like a gold golden um, color or silver or bronze or anything metallic on black paper. And I want to make sure that my plate is really clean for this one. So usually I don't clean my plate in between because if you know, if you have seen more of my uh, tutorials, I really like the leftovers to show up in my uh, next print. But this way of printing, for this way of printing, I want a really clean print. And therefore I need a, a clean plate. So my plate was pretty clean before I started this session. So I only need uh, like a baby wipe right now to clean my plate. But um, if I really want to clean my, do some deep cleaning of my plate, I will um, I will use uh, some a, a few drops of baby oil and a paper towel to clean my plate. And it's amazing what comes off your plate when you um, when you add some baby oil. I'm also going to make sure that my brayer is clean. Or maybe better, I take a clean, a clean brayer. I don't want any black in my in my gold paint. So I have some black paper here, and it's like cardstock, um, just regular cardstock, but a really smooth one. So not one with uh, a lot of texture in there. A really smooth cardstock and I'm not sure but I think the recollections uh, line the one that I have the white paper from this one I think it's available in any color and so it's all the same uh, smooth cardstock as this white one and it's the same quality of paper as the black one that I have here so if you would get the recollections um paper in um, in black, then you would have this really nice, smooth cardstock. I I'm going to pick a couple of leaves that don't have any wet paint on the back. So this one has paint because that might transfer to my plate and I don't want that. So I'm just going to pick a couple that are clean. Uh, that would work probably. And now I'm going to add my gold paint. And again, a thin layer for the details. And Make it nice and even. Okay. And now I'm going to just put these leaves on top of my plate. And I always put the veins down because then you get the most of your of the details of your of your leaves let me add some more and let's do one 
down here. Okay, so now I'm going to use a sheet of tissue paper to pick up the paint in the open areas. I really like to use um, tissue paper to do this as it's really thin and you can actually see uh, if you pick up all of the paint, if you touch all of the paint that's on the plate. And it's very easy because it's so thin and uh, flexible to to push it into those open areas much easier than the uh, cardstock that I used before. Uh, and as it, I'm not aiming for this print, this is only like the pickup paper. I can uh, totally use tissue paper for it. Of course, you can also do printing on the tissue paper and use it as collage material. But now I'm just using it as pickup paper. And uh, I have picked up all of the paint from the open area. So it's really a really clean plate in between the leaves. And I should be able to get a print that uh, only is only showing the leaves and uh, the black paper in between the leaves should be nice and clean. Oh no, my paint dried again, like really fast. That's such a bummer. Uh, as you can see, it didn't pick up paint it's uh, left behind on the plate unfortunately um i'm just going to try again using um a slow dry medium because then i can probably also show you the difference so i have a print here i think i have it here uh, that i made before with the gold paint and as you can see this picked up way better than the one that i just showed you but uh, i have a slow dry uh, blending medium here it's also from a uh, liquitex like a uh, slow dry blending medium and i'm just going to add a tiny little bit of this um to my plate and roll it out with my paint. So I'm not going to mix my paint and my uh, slow dry medium um, before adding it to the plate. I'm just going to add both to the plate and then uh, bray it out. And then while I'm braying it, it will, uh, it will mix. That makes it easier. And also I don't have any leftover paint that I uh, need to use like right away or, uh, even worse, have to try to um, throw away. I, I don't want to to waste any paint, so I would not prefer to do that. So just a few drops of the slow dry medium. Um. Okay. Oops, I'm touching my again I hear a little beep I don't know what's happening but uh, I'm still here right yeah I'm still here okay so I'm going to mix the gold and my slow dry medium and as you can see it takes a little bit of effort to get that mixed nicely but now I have a little bit more um, working time so I can um, take a little bit longer to decide where to have all my leaves and to um, put the paper on top. It has, uh, it does have some benefits to have paint that dries slower, especially if you are making like one layer prints, then this is really nice. If you do uh, multiple layer prints, then um, I don't really like it when my paint dries really slow because uh, I want to continue working and um, 
yeah i like i like it when my paints dry fast but uh, for this specific technique okay so try again and pick up that so i can see now i don't know if you can see it but i can see now that a little bit more paint stayed behind in the open area so i'm just going to place another piece of tissue paper on top and don't worry i will use this tissue paper for other uh, projects and print more print more layers on top it's not like i'm throwing this away and it only served this one uh, purpose Okay, removing the leaves and if everything went according to plan, then this should be wet enough to make a nice print. And let's see if I picked up everything now. And I think this looks much better. So there we go. As you can see, a lot of details. And an almost clean print. I have a little bit of paint here that I didn't pick up with my tissue paper. But um, yeah, this looks really quite well. Okay, and then... Um, I want to um, show you the technique with the ink. Um, let me see. I have a little list of things I wanted to show you. And I think, yeah, I'm um, ready for the ink. So I'm going to put aside this plate and get out my yellow stained inky plate and uh, you will you will understand uh, what i said about the the colors not not showing the the actual colors when i do uh, when i add the ink to this plate um, i also have some reels on instagram that show uh, printing with the inks and then uh, people say that <laughs> that the reels are uh, fake and not uh, the, the final print is something different than what I put on the plate because I put for instance uh, a blue on the plate but it looks green and then I pick up the paint uh, the ink and then it looks blue again on the uh, on the paper and people are like there was green on the plate and now it looks blue and that isn't right but that's because my plate is yellow and I can't help it. I also don't know how to do it differently. So you can actually see what I'm uh, what I'm using. Yeah, I can show I can show the um, the inks before adding them to the to the plate. I guess so. I'm using archival inks today, um, but you can use almost any. Um, dye ink or um what is this called like um uh like permanent inks um also inks like um that are a little bit faster drying like stays on for instance can also be used on the plate because um the plate is non -por not porous uh even the um faster drying inks stay wet quite a time on the plate so you can use all of them and um other than staining the plate you will always be able to get the inks off so it's not like um uh ink is building up on the plate and you can't get it off it's actually the pigments in the inks that 
kind of soak into the plate, which gives this yellow color. And uh, funny enough, it's only the yellow orangey uh, colors that stain the plate. So I never had a plate that turned blue or green or red or something. I don't know why that is. It, it must be something with the pigments. So I'm using these archival ink pads. I also have the smaller ones like the, uh, the Distress um, archival inks and the, the little ones uh, from Ranger. They can all be used uh, on the plate. They are all the same inks. Um, so if you, if you look at the Distress inks, the Distress archival inks are actually archival inks and not Distress inks. They just match the Distress colors from Tim Holtz. And that's why they are called Distress archival inks. But they are the same inks as these archival inks and they are permanent. So they are not like the Distress inks, um, water, um, 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 I don't know. I don't know the word. Um, that you can uh, reactivate them. That you can reactivate them with water. You you cannot. These are all permanent inks once they are dry. So and now um, we get to the the cleanup paper with the layer of acrylic ink on it. And I will show you why um, I'm using these papers for um, cleanup paper and the difference you get when you use clean uh, copier paper that has no uh, paint on it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, add some ink to the plate. This looks a little bit dry. Let's take another one. And then some green. So I'm not really a stamper. I don't use my ink pads a lot for just regular stamping and I'm okay with um, the pads um, being a little bit um, contaminated. So if I go with one with this pad into an area with a darker color, then some of the darker color might get uh, onto this pad, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, if you don't want that to happen, then you have to make sure that the colors don't touch each other and um, use a brayer to blend the colors. So I really like those Tim Holtz distress brayers for um, with inks. I don't know uh, why exactly I uh, like this one better than the um, uh, than than this one from Speedball, but for inks, I just really like these distress brayers and kind of also because all of, for some reason all of the ink rolls off when you clean your um clean your brayer and um yeah i just like them so what i'm going to do is uh, put some things on my plate let's do uh, one of these let's also do some uh, let me see. It should not have wet paint on them. So like this one and uh, mm -mm -mm. that's a big one that doesn't fit. I think this one is quite dry. Oh, well, let's just Let's just see. So now first I'm going to do uh, pick up my uh, my um, ink from the open areas with clean copier paper, with a sheet of clean copier paper. There's nothing on here. So I'm just going to push it down. And I, I also could have used actually the um, tissue paper 
uh, that would have been nicer to get into the open areas. But on the other hand, it's quite, uh, because it's so thin, the ink might actually soak through and then your hands will get really dirty. So you still would need that extra layer of paper on top. Um, so does that, that doesn't really make sense. Um, but of course, if you want to print on tissue paper because you want to use the tissue paper, then you can do this with tissue paper with a sheet of copier paper on top. So what's happening now, and I hope that it will show really well, is that the clean uh, copier paper is picking up all of the ink from the open areas. So when I do my print, so I remove these, and then I do my print on um, a, sh a sheet of white cardboard, then my background, the area uh, in between the botanicals and the leaves will be very light. Sometimes you can even take away so much of the ink that the background is like almost clean. The same as with the, uh, with the golden uh, paint. So you get, um, you get your colored uh, parts on top of a really light and almost sometimes almost clean background. If you do the same, but then with um, paper that already has a layer of acrylic paint. Oh, I just cleaned my plate and look, I even got a second print. That's fun. If you do it with um, a sheet of paper that has a layer of acrylic paint already on it, then the uh, acrylic paint is not going to pick up as much of the ink because it's um, a layer of acrylic paint, dried acrylic paint basically is uh, like a plastic layer and it's not absorbent. So it's not going to pick up so much of the ink, which means that you get a totally different look of your print. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to add my ink and the look of the ink of the of the print will be a little bit like frosty watercolory kind of print i'm just going to blend these colors here again Okay, there we go. And uh, I'm actually going to use the same parts because the ink will take a while to dry on my leaves and my, uh, my other parts and uh, might actually show up in my next print. So kind of like the colors get transferred from the um, from the parts that I used in my previous print into the next print. And uh, personally, I like my prints the best when I'm doing like a session like this and use the same materials over and over again and all these colors built up. And then I suddenly get like a blue, some blue leaves in this orange part and uh, orange leaves in the blue part and just uh, things get mixed up. And I really like that. So um, I can absolutely recommend when you do this that you use the same leaves a couple of times and your prints will only get better and uh, get more colors in the, in the final prints. So now I'm using that sheet of paper with my acrylic layer. And less paint, less ink is picking up 
from the plate. And you should see a difference um, in this print and my previous one. I hope. <laughs> Things don't work always out uh, the way I think they will or the way I planned, but that is kind of the charm of gel printing, right? That, But now it does. So here you can see that it has... Uh, the background is much darker, there's uh, much more color in the background, so you get more like, a, yeah, I would say almost a frosty, frosty look where this one is much cleaner. So, um, yeah, it's uh, definitely fun to try and experiment with um, different uh, kinds of pickup paper because that can also change the outcome of your print. Um, I think I showed all of the techniques that I wanted to show today. So uh, are there any questions that I can answer right now? Um, we I do have one. How long okay. can you leave the paint to dry on the plate? Will it always come off with a new wet layer? Yeah, so uh, dry is dry and uh, it's not getting any drier if you leave it on there for a week or for a month or for two months, it doesn't really matter. Um, you will always be able to pull up the dry paint with, um, with a wet layer of paint. Um, and if you can't get it up because for um, maybe the layers of paint has have built up and you have so much paint on your plate that it doesn't come off with one layer of wet paint, then you could use tape like a clear packaging tape or a masking tape and you can just rub it onto your plate and it will pick up all of the dry paint from your plate and then um, if that's still a lot of paint then your tape will actually be quite pretty and you can use that as collage material again in your mixed media in your art journal or whatever you would like to to use it for so yeah it doesn't really matter if it's on there for like one day or for a much longer time any more questions does oh, printing I just, on fabric require a fabric medium i just saw it popping up um it doesn't you don't have to use a fabric medium you can just print with acrylic paint on fabric but it depends on what you want to do with the fabric so if you're making like uh, I don't know, a pouch for your pencils, then you can just use uh, acrylic paint. But if you actually want to wash your fabric, uh, be able to wash your fabric, then you can either use um, fabric paint. So some fabric paints have the same consistency as acrylic paint and they work really well on the gel plate. But you can also add um, uh, an, a fabric painting medium. I actually have one here. I think uh, Michaels has this one too. It's from De Deco Art Americana fabric painting medium. So you can add this to your uh, acrylic paint and then uh, you have to fixate it uh, after it dried and then you can actually wash your, uh, your fabric. So, um, and with this, I do the same as I did with my slow dry medium. I don't mix it in a cup, but I mix it straight onto the plate. So I don't have any leftover paint and I actually use all of the paint that's on, on my plate, but you have to uh, read the uh, instructions about the, uh, the amount of um, medium you need in uh, with your acrylic paint. But that's uh, that's also an option that you can uh, use if you want to uh, print on fabric. So, oh, I see another co uh, question coming up. Let me see if I, let me see where the chat is because I don't see the entire chat. Oh, here it is. Uh, I saw something about archival. Why would you choose to use archival? over acrylic paint or vice versa? Well, it totally depends on uh, on the um, 
the feel and the effect that you want to create because as you can see you get a totally different look from uh, inks than you get from acrylic paint so um, you have um, maybe even more details when you use acrylic uh, when you use archival inks um, but you get um, most of the time more vibrant colors when you more bold colors than when you use acrylic paint so it totally depends on what you prefer and um, you can just do both so yeah it depends on what you like okay i think um that's it for today um i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you again uh, next month for a new class uh, with Jelly Arts and Michaels. And uh, I wish you all a very nice day. See you again. Bye. Bye-bye.